students hope you are doing well in this video we are going to discuss enterprise data center design consideration part 2 of unit 3 designing basic campus and data center network for the subject enterprise network design of b7 semester it <music> In part 1 of enterprise data center design consideration, we have already covered the enterprise data center and the Cisco enterprise data center architecture framework including SONA. Now come to part 2 of this enterprise data center design consideration that is enterprise data center infrastructure includes data center access layer, data center aggregation, aggregation layer, data center core layer and density and scalability server. So let us discuss each and everything in detail enterprise data center infrastructure here you can see that uh, this diagram covers all the things like data center core data center aggregation and campus core layer and data center access so this is the first layer and here a typical large enterprise data center infrastructure design is shown. The design follows the Cisco multi-layer infrastructure architecture including core aggregation and the access layer. Okay. So the enterprise data center, the distribution layer is known as in this particular enterprise data center, the distribution layer is known as aggregation layer. So this is the aggregation layer. Now in data center infrastructure uh, it must provide the port density and layer 2 and layer 3 connectivity for servers at the access layer while supporting security services provided by acls firewalls and intrusion detection system so each and everything is listed here hmm. ids is the intrusion detection system it must support server form services such as Content switching, caching, and secure socket layer (SSL). Offloading while integrating with uh, multi-layer server forms, mainframes, and mainframe services such as TN3270. This is TN3270. Load balancing and SSL, SSL offloading, secure socket layer offloading. Network devices are often deployed in redundant pairs to avoid the single point of failure. So let us discuss each and every layer in detail. Now come to data center access layer. So data center access layer is the bottom most layer. Okay. So the data center access layer provides layer 2, layer 3 and mainframe connectivity. Layer 2, layer 3 and mainframe connectivity. The design of data center access layer depending on whether layer 2 or layer 3 access switches are used. It is typically built with high performance low latency layer 2 switch allowing better sharing of services device across multiple servers and allowing the use of layer 2 clustering which requires the servers to be layer 2 adjacent. With layer 2 access switches the default gateway for the servers can be configured at the access of aggregation layer. Server can be single or dual attached. Here you can see the different different servers. Okay. NIC in the servers means single NIC or multiple NICs are there. Yeah. Now a virtual LAN or trunk is required between two redundant access layer switches. Okay. For what? For to support having a single IP address on the two server links to two separate switches. The default gateway is implemented in access layer. Now a mix of both layer 2 and layer 3 accesses switches using one rack unit, one RU. Here it is written somewhere one RU that is one rack unit. So this is also there and modular platform result in flexible solution and allow application environment to be optimally positioned. So this bottom most layer is the data center access layer. Okay. And this middle layer is the aggregation layer. So let us now discuss aggregation layer in detail. So data center aggregation layer. 
here it is placed. The data center aggregation or distribution layer aggregates the uplinks from the access layer from the access layer to the data center core to the data center core okay and is the critical point for controlled and application services security and application services devices such as load balancing SID device ssl offloading devices firewalls and IDS devices provide layer 4 through layer 7 services and are often deployed as the module in the aggregation layer. The highly flexible design takes advantage of economies of scale by lowering the total cost of ownership. That terminology is known as TCO, total cost of ownership and reducing complexity by reducing the number of components to configure and manage service devices deployed in at the aggregation layer are shared among all the servers whereas services de uh, service devices deployed at the access layer benefit only the server that are directly attached to the specific access switch Although layer 2 at the aggregation or distribution layer is tolerated for legacy design, new design should have layer 2 only at the data center access layer. With layer 2 at the data center aggregation layer, physical loops in the topology would have to be managed by STP, that is, spanning tree protocol. In this case, as for other design, RPV ST plus is recommended best practice to ensure a logically loop free topology over the physical topology so this is rpvst plus okay rpvst plus topology the data center aggregation layer typically provides layer free connectivity from the data center to the core and maintain the connection and session state for redundancy depending on the requirement and the design the boundary between layer 2 and layer 3 at the data center aggregation layer can be in the multi layer switches, the firewall or the content switching devices in the aggregation layer, depending on the data center application. The aggregation layer might also need to support a large spanning tree processing load. Okay, so this is a data center aggregation layer. Now come to data center core layer. Implementing a data center core layer is best practice for the large data centers. So this is in the top of any organization. So there should be some consideration we need to take. These consideration are 10 gigabit Ethernet density, administrative domain and policies and anticipation of future deployment. So let us discuss each of them. 10 gigabit Ethernet density without a data center core. Will there be enough 10 gigabit Ethernet ports on the campus core switch pair to support both the campus building distribution layer and the data center aggregation layer? This is the question. Now come to administrative domain and policies. Separate campus and data center covers help isolate the campus building distribution layer from data center aggregation layer for troubleshooting maintenance administration and implementation of policies using quality of services and ACL. Then anticipation of future deployment. So what is that? The impact of that could result from implementing a separate data center core layer at a later data might make it worthwhile to install it at the beginning. The data center typically connects the campus core using layer 3 links the data center network addresses are summarized into campus core and the campus core injects a default route into the data center network key data center core layer characteristics are our distributed forwarding architecture low latency switches 10 gigabit ethernet scalability and scalable ip multicast support Density and scalability of server. Some scaling issue in the data center relate to the physical environment. The most common access layer in the enterprise today is based on 
मॉड्यूलर चेसिस सिस्को कैटलिस्ट सिक्स फाइव डबल जीरो और फोर फाइव डबल जीरो सीरीज स्विचेस दिस टोपोलॉजी और हैज आल्सो प्रूवन टू बी वेरी स्केलेबल मेथड ऑफ बिल्डिंग सर्वर फॉर्म दैट प्रोवाइड हाई डेंसिटी हाई स्पीड अपलिंग्स एंड रिटेंडेंट पावर एंड द प्रोसेसर ऑल्डो दिस अप्रोच हैज बीन वेरी सक्सेसफुल इट रिजल्ट इन चैलेंजेस व्हेन यूज इन एंटरप्राइज डेटा सेंटर एनवायरनमेंट the typical enterprise data center experience high growth in the sheer number of servers at the same time server density has been improved with one ru and blade server solutions three three particular challenges result from this tends to cable bulk power and cooling so what is cable bulk means bulk of cables are there typically 3 to 4 interfaces are connected to a server with a higher density of server per track cable routing and management can become quite difficult anybody can understand that if more number of cables are there connected to a server then what will happen now come to power power is also very very important consideration the increase density of component in rack is a driving uh, and it is driving a need for larger power feed to the rack many data center do not have the power capacity at the server rows to support the uh, support this kind of increase now come to cooling if power is high cable bulk is there then the heating is also there so the number of cables lying under the a raise floor and the cable bulk at the cabinet base entry is blocking the air flow required to cool environment in the rack at the same time the server in the rack require more cooling volume because of their higher density so these challenges have focused customers to find alternative solution by spacing cabinets modifying cable route or other means including not deploying high density server solution another way that customer seeks to solve some of these problem is by using a rack based switching solution using one or you top up rack switches keep the server interface cables in the cabinet reducing the amount of cabling in the floor and thus reducing the cabling and cooling issues another option to place cisco catalyst 6500 series switches like bookends near the ends of row of rack so that there are fewer switches to manage so in this lecture we have discussed enterprise data center infrastructure data center access layer data center aggregation layer data center core layer and density and scalability in unit 3 we have covered the effect of characteristic of the following on the campus network design that is application environment and infrastructure so in application including peer to peer client lo local server client server farm and client enterprise a server in environment including location of the network node the distance between the node and the transmission media used and in infrastructure devices including layer 2 or multi layer switching convergence time type of modular switching ip multicast quality of services and load sharing these are the important points always coming into consideration the design consideration and recommended practice for building access layer building distribution layer the campus core the op optional is distribution module and the server farm module then enterprise data center module de design consideration including an introduction to general technologies and models used in enterprise data center design so with this we cover the we come finish the unit here are some question answer which generally ask in examination like what characteristic must you consider when designing a campus network what are the most important network requirement for client enterprise is application communication list examples of application that would be appropriate to reside in the server form a company keeps all its server and workstation within one building what geography design structure should you choose describe how interbuilding and distant remote network geographic structures are different 
what is the difference between 8020 rule and 2080 rule what type of cable would you recommend for connecting two switches that are 115 meter apart compare the range of bandwidth specification of copper twisted pair multi-mode fiber single mode fiber and wireless what is pim what is the difference between data link layer and multi-layer switching what is network flow what application might require the network to handle multicast traffic a company is using video on demand which uses ip multicast as a part of its distance learning program the route routers are configured for ip multicast taking into account that the majority of lan switches are layer two switches which protocol should be enabled on the lan switches to reduce some other questions are what function does the building distribution layer provide as a recommended practice when should a dedicated campus core layer to be deployed an organization require a highly available core network and uses ip telephony for all its voice communication both internal and external which device and topology would you recommend for the campus core design what is the function of age distribution module a company has mission critical application hosted on common server that are accessible to selected employee throughout the company's multiple building where and how would you recommend that these servers be placed within the network describe how the enterprise data center has evolved a service centric model from a server centric model what is the purpose of data center aggregation layer when determining to implement a core layer within a data center design what factors should you consider so these are the questions answer question answer the question not answer generally asked so for answers you need to watch the entire unit three videos in next video we will start with unit four designing remote connectivity thank you for watching this video and bye bye have a nice day have a nice time